Welcome back everyone, John Panio here with another video. So we just got some exciting news that just dropped from Twitter for Limbus Company. We have some updates or news for the Refraction Railway Line 1. For those of you guys who don't know, Refraction Railway Line 1 is essentially going to be our end game content. It's going to last a month, starting from April 6th to May 4th. And it gets unlocked after Chapter 3, Stage 22. So how it works is it's going to be 13 difficult levels where clearing each four will give you essentially resources. How it works is currently right now, this is just all not speculation, but these are not fully locked in. But how it's going to work is you're going to enter in with your group of identities and egos, and then you're going to begin exploration. Looks like you can draw a line to see where you want to go, but you're going to be going through all those stages. What will happen is as you enter into the stage and begin your expedition, unlike other combat-based content, the level ups and tier ups done to your identities and egos while an expedition is in progress will not be immediately reflected on your team stats. The upgrades will only apply after starting a new run from the beginning. That just basically means that if you do level up in the run, those buffs or the stat increases aren't going to apply during that run. It's going to apply at the end of the run after you're done your run. What's also very interesting is that when you clear a stage, the station will record the number of turns taken to clear it with clear turns and the cumulative amount of turns taken throughout the current expedition total turns. After clearing a stage in the line for the first time during the event period, the rewards will be sent to Lost and Found. To gain access to Lost and Found, a number of Enkafilla modules will be required. Afterwards, you may freely access it and claim the rewards you've earned without any additional costs. Which is interesting. This feels like it's basically saying, all right, you got to pay a one-time fee of Enkafilla module to get access to your rewards during the event. Interesting. And since you don't have to pay additional costs to open it, it just sounds like a one-time fee to get your rewards. Interesting mechanic. Not a big fan, but not a big deal either. They say that every battle on the line adopts the abnormality battle method directly matching ally skills against enemy skills. The health and sanity of the sinners will carry over between stages. However, after clearing a stage, those who did not participate in the battle will fully recover their health and sanity when entering the next stage. So this means it will be a good idea to be cycling through your units so that means you're not using your strongest unit all the time so it means now instead of having just one strong team clear the entire content you're going to be rotating your units to make it so that you're going to actually have to balance out your team so they're both equally strong versus having a super strong team one and then a super weak team two so really liking this change when a center dies they will remain unavailable for the rest of the expedition which makes sense ego resources will carry over between stages i'm wondering if that's going to be at the same as mirror dungeon where you lose half your resources if it's a full carryover if it's a full carryover definitely a lot of strategies that you can look forward to when you lose a battle you will be taken back to the point right before entering the stage during an expedition you can choose to start over from any previous stage when you do the battle will start from with the sinners lives and eagles resources reverted to that point and any progress you made in the stage after it will be lost you may not change your team in the middle of the expedition if you wish to modify your set you must start a new expedition so what this is basically saying if you have a terrible run or it's looking you have you have a terrible run you can go back a stage or two to fix up the mistakes to be able to then progress through. So this allows people to limit test and experiment without getting too heavily punished since if you died on say stage five and you made a mistake on stage three that was very detrimental to that run, you can go back to stage three and fix that run. So very nice of them to do that. A nice little save scumming tactic, but it's good to do that because you're just saving time overall. And if your run is completely botched, then you just have to restart, which is also fine. The next big thing to go over is upon clearing the final stage, the records for the expedition will be saved in the logs, which can be viewed at any time during the event. The records in the logs will include the expedition date, total turns taken, identities and ego used, and damage statistics. The logs will only show your own records. Expeditions with fewer total turns will be ranked higher. Expedition with those total turns that go over 90, 199 will not be recorded. So this leads into the next point, which is basically saying we're going to have these banners and if you complete expedition under these amount of turns then you'll be given these banners i'm assuming that you don't get all three or you might get all three i'm assuming maybe you only get one of them i don't know but to me it's not a big deal base basically means there's some little goodies where you can work towards min maxing your expedition to make it so that you can clear it all in under 
50 turns. That's the number they're using right now. They probably will keep it under 50 turns, but we'll see. But essentially, the faster you can beat the expedition, the better the bragging rights are going to be. So it's a nice little bonus. Nothing crazy. They're not expecting you to, or they're not, it doesn't seem like they're going to be giving you a ton of lunacy, which is nice, but we'll see. Maybe we're going to be getting lunacy as a big reward. Maybe we're not. Ideally, I hope they don't make lunacy into the big factor for this mode only because you want people to play the mode and you don't want people to feel punished for not participating in the mode so most likely what will happen is as long as you can clear the expedition you're going to get all the rewards regardless the only thing that clearing the expedition faster in less amount of turns is you're just going to get a nice little special decorative banner which is nice and i think that's probably the proper way of doing it you don't want people to feel like they're missing out on resources so how you alleviate that is you give something cosmetic at the end for the people who actually try hard which is banner really cool really liking what we're going to be getting into in the next month with the latest update that's going to be happening i think that project moon's doing a really good job we're they still have some bugs to fix in the game but that's not a big deal but i'm really looking forward to this type of content it will allow for people to experiment and play with different team compositions and this game does feel a little bit like a deck builder so i'll get to experiment with different units stronger units use weaker units so really looking forward to it as usual you guys if you guys have any questions comments or concerns let me know down in the comment section down below i'm really looking forward to these changes are you guys excited do you think it's gonna be good what are the rewards gonna be yeah let me know down in the comment section down below. As usual, I stream on Twitch Monday to Friday and I upload basically Monday to Friday too. I also have a Discord community, so make sure you drop into that for anything Limbus related. John Panio signing out. I'll see you guys later. Bye for now.